I absolutely uh, love this story. It is one of my favorite pieces of scripture in, in all the Bible and one of my favorite books, which is the Gospel of Matthew. This text is appointed for us uh, this morning along with Genesis 18. And I want to encourage you to check those out. Take out a Bible that may be uh, present in your home or even uh, look these up on a Bible app on your phone. Uh, Genesis uh, 18, 1 through 8, and then also uh, the scripture for this morning uh, from Matthew 9 and Matthew 10. It is a really interesting sending out that, that we see here. Jesus um, sends his 12 disciples out on a mission um, to basically reach out to folks. And he encourages them to, to proclaim a really simple message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. And he encourages them and instructs them uh, to do it in a simple and humble way. If you remember, he says, um, to, and he tells them to cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. But then he says, take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey. He says, uh, don't take an extra tunic and don't wear sandals and don't take a staff with you. He sends his disciples out in an incredibly vulnerable and simple way. And it can be tempting to read this and to think that we need to emulate that experience, that, that our lives as Christian disciples needs to, to be just like that, um, to be sort of superhero disciples, if you will. But I don't know if that's exactly what Jesus is doing here. Sure, uh, uh, having a faith that has a non-attachment to things and, and doing it in a, in a simple, humble way with a simple message is incredibly important to sharing our faith. But what's really interesting in this text, if you notice, Jesus tells his disciples, don't go to the Gentiles. Don't reach out to the Samaritans just yet. But go to the lost house of Israel and go in the most vulnerable of ways. I think what Jesus is doing here is something very interesting. He is trying to remind the people of Israel, his Jewish brothers and sisters, of their own faith heritage. And what's incredibly important and foundational to their faith identity, which is hospitality and welcoming. Throughout the Torah, uh, which was you know, the first five books of our Bible in, in the Jewish sacred texts, throughout the Torah, there are explicit examples of how important it is for a Jewish person to be welcoming and hospitable to strangers and to foreigners. In uh, Deuteronomy 10, it says, for the Lord your God is a God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves strangers, providing them food and clothing. In Leviticus 19, it says, when an alien or a foreigner or stranger resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress them. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you or equal to you. You shall love the alien or the stranger as yourself. You were, for you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. This is something that is absolutely fundamental to what it means to be a good Jew. Um, the other prime example that I want to share with you this morning comes out of Genesis 18, which is another appointed reading for us out of our, out of our um, lectionary. This is a story of Abraham. Now, you all may be familiar with the story of Abraham and Sarah, but um, in that moment when Sarah hears from a couple of strangers that she is going to, to bear a, a son. But what I'm interested in is the first few verses of this story, where three strangers come to Abraham at his tent. They're walking by, and Abraham, it says in the, in the text, he looked up and saw them, and he ran to them to welcome them, encouraging them to, to visit with him. 
bowing at their feet and saying to them, please come stay with me. He said, um, my Lord, if I find favor with you to these strangers, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So the stranger said, do as you have said. Then Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready three measures of choice flour, which is a lot of flour. Knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he said, and then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. A meal, a feast. How many of us have sought to do that to someone that we didn't even know who may be passing our home in our own neighborhoods? Abraham's example is one that was to be emulated uh, throughout history for the Jewish people as an ideal for how to welcome strangers and be hospitable to someone who you may not know. Jesus, in his text, in this story, when sending out the twelve in the most vulnerable of ways, is giving the people an opportunity. An opportunity to welcome in the disciples and to care and tend to them and to hear their message. It's really easy to, to see the disciples' humility and those instructions and think, well, that is just on a whole other level. I don't know if I can emulate that kind of discipleship. I don't know if I could do that. But I think that what's more important in this text is to see it from the other side and to ask yourselves, would you welcome the disciple, the disciple who has nothing, the person who is totally vulnerable, who needs maybe help and shelter and shoes, maybe needs a meal. That's, I think, the test that Jesus is sort of offering up by sending out his disciples into the community. It's an interesting way to think about it and, and, in, and to interpret this, this story. And I want to invite you this week to think of ways that you could be more welcoming and hospitable as a follower of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you to, to think about ways, even in the midst of this time of social distancing where we're supposed to be still kind of keeping six feet from one another and being separate and working from home. Some of us still are doing that. I want you to think of ways that you could maybe reach out to somebody, uh, whether they're in your neighborhood, whether they're maybe somebody that you work with, or maybe somebody that you don't even know. Reach out to them in hospitality and seek to care for them, and let them know that, that you love them, and that you care about them, and, and that you don't necessarily have to let them know that you're a Christian, you can, and you can share your own faith with them, that would be a beautiful thing, but really the act itself of love, of hospitality, and compassion, that's what I want you to, to think creatively about this week, um, and in the weeks to come. We as a church are seeking to, to do that ourselves as we enter into this journey of reopening. We are trying to be safe, but also as hospitable and welcoming as we can be um, as we journey into what it means to, to have this new normal. And I hope that you would join us as a staff and as pastors in that endeavor, seeking to, to welcome one another safely and warmly, um, and to welcome those into our community that, that maybe have never had been to church with us before. That's the good news for today. Now, I want to invite you. Um, let us affirm our faith this morning um, with the affirmation of faith, and I think we are going to have that on the screen. But I want you to do something a little bit different uh, where you are this morning. When you see the word no on your screen, um, today, I want you to shout that out. Even if you're by yourself, even if you're with your family, um, I want you to shout that where you are. So when you see the word no, make sure that you do that.
Here is our affirmation. Hear now these words. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. In Christ Jesus our Lord, thanks be to God. Amen.